Hello everyone, Monty here, Market Analyst at IG. And today we're starting a new segment in terms of looking at sentiment. And the reason why is because we wanna look at clients, where they stand, how they got there, as well as when and where applicable when it comes to COT speculators, plotting them onto the chart and getting an idea in terms of what their next move might be, what ranges they're really looking at. And that gives us a better idea in terms of whether or not we wanna go long in favor of, of where they are or go against. So if they're long, uh, we, get, we end up going short. And uh, in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna start with gold, which is a bit trickier just because a lot of times clients are holding majority buy bias, not just IG clients, but also when it comes to COT speculators. So that means that we have to kind of look at majority, we have to look at ranges within majority buy bias. You can't wait until they go majority short, although that would be a significant signal. And what I'm going to do first off is pull up IG's trading platform. I'm just going to take a look at, in this case, we're looking at gold. And just to let you guys know where you can find this. So you just go to the, over here, you can see Client sentiment, gonna click on that. And you can see that right now holding 67% bias as of publishing this video. And if you think that's pretty high, that, that is what I would consider. Anything above 65% is considered heavy buy territory. Uh, take a look at its precious metal cost in uh, silver, 76%, uh, a couple of notches shy of extreme buy territory. Platinum in extreme long territory at 83%. And palladium, whew, much, much higher at 95%. That's that, that, those are high rates, and it's been quite high for quite some time. Going back to gold, though, because that is kind of the focus of this video, even though we will look at other precious metals. And what I want to do in this case is I want to go ahead and switch over and take a look at COT speculators. Now, it just so happens, they're not usually the same percentage, but it just so happens that in this case, uh, you look at gold, the outer circle represents the most recent COT report. It's released every week, and the inner circle is the is the week before. 65% rose to 68% combination of an increase in longs and a drop in shorts. But a lot of times, because they're also holding majority by buys, people oftentimes want to look at other uh, precious metals and just see, okay, what does the rest of the precious metal complex look like? Are they majority buying the rest? If you take a look at silver, they were just 57% and it rose to 64%. Uh, that was a plus. But look at platinum. They were actually on the verge of shifting to majority shorts. They're back up to about 60% and palladium, they're extreme sells. So if you do get a, a mixed picture when it comes to the, the four of them, a lot of times that usually might be a better indicator in terms of where they might see things going. What I want to do though is I want to go ahead and plot both onto a chart. This is gold's weekly price chart. Don't worry if you can't see the price chart that clearly because the goal really here is to take a look at sentiment against this backdrop. This is a, um, we're superimposing sentiment onto it, looking at the left axis, and those dotted lines are percent long. Blue is retail or IG client sentiment, and green dotted, that's COT speculators. And you can see in this case, the 50%, I put a, a red line over there across, and that 50% means that above here, so if you're below 50%, this is as percent long. So if the dotted line goes below, so say 45%, that means they're only 45% long, which means they're majority short. Above means they're majority buy, and that's the significance of that 50% line so that you can see that throughout this entire period, and this is a weekly chart, so every candle represents a week of, of movement, since late October of last year, up until now, majority buy buys for both throughout this period. And that's, you know, that, that's how it usually works for gold. This is why I said it's a bit trickier in this case. So we're not really, it's not like looking at a, an FX pair, which we'll de definitely look forward to doing in the future, where you'll see that it shifts from majority buy to majority short because a lot of people are trying to range trade it. Gold by default, you've got a significant portion that are just holding majority buy buys. And it's no exception here. You can see that in this case that, that there, though there is room for them to trade it. So for example, when it dropped to, to uh, the 1600s, the lower 1600s, the retail client sentiment reached 85%. So they're extreme by territory. And as prices recovered, the squeeze was over. You saw a lot of them start to unwind, 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 unwind until it reached to about you know, over, over here, you can see that when prices got to about 1960, uh, they actually were very, very close to shifting. Prices pulled back very quick to hop back on and go majority buy again. This is the issue that when you, when you usually see this with FX pairs is when, you know, if someone's long and prices go in favor, they close out the longs and then they initiate the shorts and then go up. So with gold, what you'll see is that they go long, goes in favor, close out. Uh, there might be some shorts being initiated, but then when prices move up again or at the, at a, at the site of a smaller pullback, you see them get back in and rush back in. And so they're quicker to get back sometimes into extreme buy territory. And you kind of see that towards the end over here where prices dropped to sub 1900, bam, they, there was a big jump from there around heavy buy 65% to over 80% at one point. I was actually a bit cautious at that point. I was a bit worried a little bit because I seen COT speculator bias, that's the green dotted line, come back a bit lower. And uh, they, this has worked beautifully in favor of, of, of client sentiment in the sense that pulled, it came down to here, went up, and they've started to come out a little bit and come back down to latest reading, which I showed was 67, 68%. Um, and, and the thing about COT speculators is that they've kind of been going with it. They haven't really been positioning opposite, like you might see with some of the FX majors sometimes. I mean, even when the euro was dropping to sub one during the energy crisis, you kind of, you saw them position to majority buy. They weren't going for the momentum, although 
there are plenty of times where they do, and they usually position a certain way. But in this case, you, you can see that it's kind of been going with price. So as price drops, they sort of pull back. As it goes up, they sort of raise their buy bias, and then a bit more cautious towards the upper end over here. And then you can see that when it dropped, they were quick to get out. Now, there is this fear amongst financial market participants when it comes to gold specifically. There's this big gap between where gold prices are today and where they should be had if we're going with underlying factors such as the inverted real yields on, say, the U.S. 10-year uh, Treasury. Now, the reason being is that when real yields are this high, uh, a lot of times gold prices are significantly lower. So there's always that fear among some of these participants that on any pullback, you kind of see them get out a little bit quickly. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen now. It doesn't mean that it could ever happen, but it is a fear in the back of their minds at, at times. And I think that if there is going to be another pullback, if we are looking at higher lows, let's call it that, between what we saw you know, when it, when it reached uh, above 2,000 uh, to, to these levels, if we are looking at a situation of higher lows, the fear is that you don't want to get caught and stuck on some of these pullbacks, significant pullbacks, where, you know, it, it, it held once, held, for example, twice, but then if the squeeze happens, like it happened back when it went to 1600, you're looking at a lot, you're looking at client sentiment going up to over 80%, again, extreme buy, and of course, causing a lot of pain and requiring a significant recovery, like we saw from 1600 to above 2000, in order to be able to unwind some of those longs and profits. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We are going to be looking at some other products. Do let us know which products you'd like us to cover. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck out there, and as always, happy takes.